Ah, there we go. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Coffee and Convo Live with Ari and Chosen. Welcome. <clears throat> Today we have special guest Frederick Sparkman. <laughs> Welcome back, Frederick. And to, today we're going to continue the topic of relationship goals the round right two. way. Round two. <clears throat> okay. So for a recap, if you did not join us or you do not remember last week's topic, we were talking about the introductions um, on how to be a friend, how we learned re how to have a relationship backwards. So to elaborate on that today, uh, we have Frederick with... Uh, the friendship manual and Frederick. Well, before we go into that, Chosen, please give us a recap from last week. All right, all right, all right. So, if you did not tune in um, last week, like she said, uh, we talked about, we basically, well, mostly we talked about how we learned uh, building relationships with, you know, with significant others like the wrong way. Um, went for that romantic connection versus that friendship connection. And I do believe that I made the comment talking about how, like, we talk about, we talk about the friend, people call it the friend zone, but I call it the friend crate. And so, <laughs> so we talk about how, you know, we, we, we make it seem like what a friend crate is, you know, where they like, it's, it's looked down upon, but I look at it like, it's all right to be in a friend crate. Matter of fact, that's what you really want to be in the beginning of uh you know that's where you really want to be at in the beginning of any relationship that you're dealing with or anybody that you might be pursuing you want to be in the friend crate because you want to know you know know exactly where that connection is going and you can show this person the real you you should be trying to do that anyway off the rip but that's what we pretty much talked about uh last week um so go moving forward <laughs> the, we, we're going to touch on more mm -hmm. on relationship goals the right way um, and then we're going to go into, uh, this other little part that I think y'all <laughs> either get mad at or y'all going to really like, can't please everybody. And I ain't here, can't please I ain't here to please you. I'm here to, I ain't here to please you. I'm here to educate. We're here to educate. Edutain? Yep. I'm here to educate. <laughs> edutain. All right. <clears throat> so Frederick, can you give us, uh, quick synopsis of the friendship manual. How, how are we supposed to do this relationship thing the right way, starting from a friend? Well, the first thing you have to do is find all the things that you have in common. Most people go and try to make friends with somebody they have nothing in common with. They don't understand them. Um, basically, it's maybe somebody that uh, they look up to, they might want to get with or something like Chosen was saying. And so what they'll say is, well, I want to be their friend because I want to get into their world. Well, how are you going to get into somebody else's world if you don't understand your own? So, this goes back to what we were saying, know yourself, right? Exactly. Okay. I mean, and the biggest part about friendship is you're not presenting them the person that you go out and dress up and put on your nice hat and make sure that you got your Air Jordans on. You want to make sure that you're presenting those person that sit, sit around with his flip flops on, sweat <laughs> sweatpants, tank top, and you just like you normally are. Didn't we, we say? Yep, we yep. said that. We said that. So okay, you, is real, you only got two other things going on now. Now you have the ability to be misunderstood. So the biggest thing about uh, being misunderstood, I call it going to war. So mm -hmm. you go to war with people, you continue to throw those things out that might cause friction later on, you do it in the beginning. I have this thing where I will always, the moment that I meet somebody, I ask them if they're super sensitive, and then I'll do something to sort of slightly tick them off just to see what kind of reaction I'm gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. <laughs> you really don't learn about people. I'm laughing because I do the same stuff. <laughs> now, when I see you get angry, you're going to show me the true you. You're going to forget that facade. You're going to forget to put your mask on. And you're going to show me a glimpse of the real you. Now, I'm either going to get a green or a red flag on after that. So 
Sometimes <laughs> But I'd rather have that red flag on on the real me knowing that you don't knowing that I'm not your cup of tea versus me trying to versus me trying to mold myself or be somebody shape shift, pull a mystique on your ass and, and, and have you be like, okay, yeah, you really don't like this. Like you really don't you pretty much ain't really in my world, but we finna fix that real quick. Let me just adjust my nose this way. My eye here, <laughs> that type of stuff. So yeah, I think I like to have that. I think I like to have them red flags on the true me, and you not want to fool with me versus the fake. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> I agree. So I agree. this does this tie in, Frederick, with the um, people seem to have serious problems with finding real friends. That's what you're saying because they're being they're they're coming out with that facade. They're not being true to themselves in the beginning, yeah. and that's what's preventing them. Okay. How can I make friends with? the you that's not you hmm. so if, if you're putting up your facade eventually i'm going to put you in a position where i'm gonna crack it down break through your wall and get to the truth now you're either going to love me for it or you're going to hate me for it but i'm going <laughs> to make sure that you're not giving I'm, you can't be friend to betray so i mean that's and one this of the is things that you'll find and this is the basic foundation of having that that romantic relationship that everyone is looking for. You don't you don't go and court someone and decide you want to be in a relationship with this person, and then three years later, then start showing your true self. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. see, the, that's the whole purpose of going to war. Now, I've learned from experience before you know I got back with the ex-wife. But I, I started seeing that uh, these women would come up to you. They smiling, got this stuff on and everything else. And I was like, well, you got to be my friend first. Well, well OK, OK, that's fine. But we're going to have to go to war. What, what, what does that mean? That means we're going to have to argue stuff out and hash thing out until there's nothing left but common ground. Well, I don't, I don't really want to go to war. I don't like arguing. So I'm like, OK, then you're probably not going to be a good friend for me. <laughs> well, and, 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 and that's that's sad to say, but it's so true. Uh, you and I, uh, with our relationship, that's how we started. We started out fighting. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but see, after all of that fighting, there's nothing left but mutual respect, understanding. Mm -hmm. I could say something just a little too funny for you, and you'll be like, Okay, what's wrong with you? You're going through something. You're not telling me something. You automatically know because I haven't done anything but show you the real me. And mm -hmm. so when something's a little bit off in the way that I present myself or the way I'm speaking, I'm not cracking as many jokes. You immediately catch on to that, hold on to it. And you know, you put me on the spot. What's wrong? Well, I didn't want to say nothing, but you know. <laughs> so <laughs> when you got somebody and you sit here and you got the blood gushing out of your head and nobody's telling you. <laughs> That's not a friend. <laughs> a friend will see those things that nobody else can see and immediately say something to you about it. Whereas you can have these people where you're walking around and you got this big old hanging loogie coming from your nose and nobody's saying anything to you. They just giving you this little <laughs> odd smile. You or know. Like, man, check your nose. <clears throat> that reminds me of... Um one of my experiences i went to work with the different color shoes on one black one brown do you know i went most of the day not knowing that until one of my good friends mentioned it to me there's something and wrong with your eyes <laughs> 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 you must have got dressed in the dark today <laughs> you know you know you got one black shoe and one brown uh, shoe <laughs> you like a fashion statement you trying to make a yeah, but then again, that goes back to them doggone trends, man. How you know I ain't setting a trend? How you know I ain't in my punky Brewster mind frame right now? You know what I'm saying? How you know I ain't trying to crisscross it up on you? Oh, that's easy. But, when I pointed out your shoes, you look like you look down. Right. <laughs> look down. You probably should have just got, you probably would have did better, be like, oh, I know. And then, and, then, and then they'd be like, ow. And so, you know. Nah. But it takes a friend to point out those types of things to you instead of, you know, sitting back with everyone else, cracking it up, Kahan and Kihin. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Frederick, um, tell us some things about this friendship manual. 
what what type of topics are you addressing other than how to be a friend and how to um, go to war in order to find that common ground? What other what other bullet points can you can you uh, direct us to there? Well, considering that I'm just shooting blind here, give me a second. I'll pull the book up. <laughs> Okay. Well, while you're pulling the book up to uh, address address that, Chosen, Go down. we mentioned last week how long you and I have been friends, mm -hmm. right? right? Okay, so before we went live, we were discussing um, your, how you want to put it? Let's just say your take on... Um, a, we'll call it platonic relationship because you know when you say friends to these people right. out here they automatically as you said man I didn't want to be I didn't want to be a friend it's something wrong with being a friend but right. in order in in order to genuinely um, draw in to that romantic level and know when it's uh, appropriate to go to a, a romantic level because you're not going to be in a romantic relationship nah, with everyone that exactly <clears throat> so Frederick had a thing that says how to identify real friends. Can you uh, elaborate, Chosen, on taking that friendship to through these uh, phases? You and I, for instance, like you said last week, we've been friends for thirty plus years. Uh huh. We we hang out. Right. Every once in a while, we hang out. We do what what people call consider a, a curse word. We go Dutch on things. <laughs> we yeah, we, like that, we I mean, treat one another, you know. Right. Exactly. Throw so some other, go ahead. So that's that's part of that's that's part of the team. You see so mm -hmm. many memes on Facebook. Uh, how many memes you've seen on Facebook with a uh, relationship goals? Uh, be her peace and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and they had like this one meme where they showed the, 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 the woman and the man was in a, a business together, help her with her dreams or, and, and believe in this person and all mm -hmm. of that. The only way that you do that is you, okay, you, you already know that money's going to be a factor in a relationship period, no even at what? the base, even at mm -hmm. the base part, even when you're doing the pursuing part of it. You know how like everybody sit up and say ain't nothing free, uh, 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 you know like like you wind up having sex with this woman or whatever you pay for it or whatever because you did take them to the movies and you did take so we already know we you you, you already know money's gonna be a factor in it okay so you, when you think about when you pass that part up and you okay even though it is a factor what is my natural intention you have to have that natural intention. First, without the ulterior motive. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if you sit up and say, yeah, man, this is the person I want to be with. Um, I'm attracted to this person and this is this, this. So, really, to tell the truth, what you're supposed to do is almost like the anointment trials. And all of y'all remember Thundercats. You remember the <laughs> anointment trials? So, it's like, it's like the anointment trials, man. Like, okay, you fit. You look the part to be the Lord of the Thundercats, but we got to see if you try and true. We got to see if you if you really are everything that you your makeup is. So, no matter how fine she is, no matter how fine he is or whatever, yeah, the, the attraction is there and everything, but let's see how well we work on these different levels of, uh, of this friendship. So, I don't want to sit up here take somebody out and you take like like a guy take you out right mm -hmm. and so the dude that, that say he's interested in you he take you out but this joker steady looking at the damn menu dog i hope she don't order this lobster because if she ordered this lobster i'm gonna have to pay for it and so you're starting to look for all these different things and hoping that she don't do this and hoping that they don't do that and because you worried about your pocket and you worried about this and this and that so you, you you're gonna be wind up looking at the point down the line that man uh i'm not really trying to share but then you want to help this person make this business and you want to help invest and in all of this so you have to kind of look at it like we're doing it because we're building here you know what i'm saying you have to you have to build on the fact that whatever this person need i'm down for the cows so if you need to call me uh 
down, if you need to call me late at night about something that you might be going through, then that's what I'm here for. You need an ear. I have, I have, you need an ear. I have two. You need, you, you, you need a shoulder to put your head on. Fuck it. I got a chest. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't necessarily got to be in the romantic part. We already put that out there. So, uh, even, even, and the one thing I like to say, well, again, we'll take it back to the friend crate part. And when you talk about the friend crate, some people, buy, some people like to say they're going to throw this person in the friend crate as a repellent. I'm going to put you in the friend yeah. crate. But then maybe like two or three weeks, they'll stop calling. Maybe like two or three weeks, they won't, they'll call. You know, it's like trying to have a nice way of saying that you ain't my type. And this, this, and that, but then you meet that one person that's really gonna be your friend. And so you wind up, they wind up keeping their word and they wind up listening to all the calls and listening to you cry your eyes out and 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 and, and stuff like that with them. So those are your tried and true people, you know what I'm saying? That that's really gonna be your tried and true friend. Well, on the, I'm gonna say on the right way of being the tried and true friend that said, Hey, this is what I'm gonna be for you. I can't sit up here and say, I can't sit up here and say I'm gonna be your friend, but then I'm hating on the dude you dating. I was just about to bring something up like that. Uh, okay, so let I'm just interesting at this point in time. Let's say we always we've all heard that opposite sex cannot be friends. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you're married and you have a friend of the opposite sex. Let's address that. Okay. There ain't no addressing that. I'm oh, sorry, not happening. <laughs> <laughs> you said you said it's not happening. It shouldn't. I mean, if you've already had that friend before, yeah, and I yeah, know you've already had those friends. On, that's fine. But she all of a sudden have a new male friend after y'all been together now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, wait a minute. I heard about this person, that person, and that person. Who is this person? This person is new. Where they come from? Yeah, I, new. I get it. That's the mm -hmm. new dude trying to get into you. I mean, it's all. <laughs> <laughs> no. I get it. I get it. Man, I was, was coming out to be that way. Uh, so. uh, let's see. I was just bringing up the fact that it is oh my shell says oh my I was just bringing up the fact that it is possible for males and females to be friends now I was about to inquire as to how do you maintain that friendship once married I mean um, like you were saying if they need that shoulder to cry on and like I, I did mention how we uh, we go out, we'll go out for breakfast, we'll go out for lunch, you know, we'll probably catch a movie, something like that. When people tend to get married and get into these serious relationships, they tend to cut off their friendships, you know, out of what they call, quote unquote, respect for their significant other. Well, you don't actually cut the friendship cut loose. You, you yeah. change the dynamic of the friendship. Change the dynamic, exactly. Because, exactly. now, I, I'm, I don't see here want you taking your friendly shower with George that you used to take. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry, but I don't want God massaging your buttocks like he used to. <laughs> it, it, it's not happening. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you're not maintaining that part of the friendship. <laughs> <laughs> that part get but see okay. that but see that comes that comes that also comes in we go we have to go back to the business of being grown business of being grown so, that's when that trust come in and if you can't trust your significant yeah. other to kick it with their uh friend of the opposite sex you know someone prior to you coming along well i'm sorry but if the bible says that i can't trust me why should i trust you mm. <clears throat> In a moment of sure time. you can. <laughs> so you know the whole is, if you put a male and a female together, something is gonna happen. I'm That's just not always, always true. Oh, it's always true. Trust me, it's always. Why would you say that? It might be seven years, nothing. That one day y'all both get drunk. I ain't around. All of a sudden, you got a confession to make. <laughs> you weren't here. <laughs> you, you, you wasn't here. <laughs> I was lonely. 
Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden you in his arms and then y'all bumping ugly. So I'm sorry. No. no. <laughs> it's always something that happens because the more you try to do the right thing, it's always evil something bad coming your way. Evil is always present. There you go. I try to do right, but it's evil is always present. But that's duality though. So we get, you know, we get that. That's duality. But at the same yeah. time, it's still at the same time when we get you know this is trading into different waters it's at, but it ain't where we haven't been yeah, we've been back we've been to yeah, we've been. business of being grown so <laughs> i'm just gonna friendship. go ahead and say this i'm still gonna go, go ahead. ahead and say this it's still friendship mm -hmm. it's just a different level of friendship because mm. if you sit up here you tell somebody like for instance if I've had one of my best friends or whatever, if some or if a woman has had one of her best friends that's of the opposite sex, and let's say they fooled around in college or they fooled around in, in high school or some stuff like that, and it and after whatever happened and they were still best friends, to me, I'm like, okay, that should not be a dark part of your relationship. If it strengthened that relationship, it strengthened that relationship on on a different level. She just, he or she, they just know each other a little bit. They just know each other a lot more than they do. It's just, that's, okay, they're, they're question solidified question there. there. Okay, so, then I got a question for you then. All right. So you sitting there chilling, you talking to uh, your woman, her friend, her male friend that they used to kick it. He comes over, y'all at a barbecue, and he comes up and asks you, hey man, when you uh, touch that spot on her neck, does she still kick her foot like this? <laughs> You said, okay, Disrespect. a male friend, okay, okay, look, okay, look, all right, look, that right there, that, but see, that right there is disrespectful, because this is the thing, if I'm, if, for me, for instance, I have three female best friends, Ari is one of them, I know who Ari is, uh, is, uh, connected to, I'm just gonna say that, I know who she's connected to. Me and her significant other have something in common. We both love Ari, right? Well, that's great. So yeah, so if so, if we have that, and if I sit up and say, and I love Ari, what's the one thing that I don't want to do? The one thing I don't want to do is hurt her. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I don't want to do. And if I know that she's entitled, that she's tied to somebody that is probably the best thing for her, then. I'm whatever it is. It's like I'm. I'm your focus and my focus is to make sure, not even make sure, but my focus is to just say, hey, I'm just gonna sit back and watch the movie. I'm just gonna sit <laughs> back and I'm just gonna sit back and watch them, you know, flourish. There's nothing. That, there's no disrespect. No nothing. Because if a dude does that or if a woman does that, that goes back to that goes back to what I said. Exactly. That means You're that you afraid. ain't even. That means that. That means that. You didn't sit up on them nights while they was crying their eyes out mm -hmm. and, and, and and listen to them talk about the person and, and and that is yeah you might have them feelings where it should have been me or this this and it but when you were the real friend and you that genuine person it's like okay this ain't about me right now this is mm -hmm. about you and the thing about it is and if we ever did get into a relationship it's gonna be more about you anyway because it's, that's what that's where the transfer comes in at. If I mm -hmm. take care of you, you're going to take care of me. And, if, and as long as that keeps on going and if that's a, that's a well-oiled machine, then I'm going to forget mostly about me and then be able to, you know, mostly about me now. And I'm going to still keep up who I am because I still got to stay healthy. I still got to work out. I still got to, you know, be able to function because if I know I don't want to hurt this person that I'm with, then that one thing I have to be there. So I got to make mm -hmm. sure that I'm still around. So I don't have time to sit up here and just be like, okay, this is all about me. Then that person that sit up there and come to that barbecue talking about, hey, bro, I wish a nigga would. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, 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 that spot on her neck, did she still kick her neck up? Like, okay, now I see you for who you really are. Exactly. You didn't come at me. You didn't come at me being like, hey, uh, you. chances are if I know her and she's probably introduced me to who this friend is, and then yeah, this dude start clicking or whatever, and, and and it's like, all right, cool. You know, we both got something in common. We both cool with her, and I'm cool with you. And me and this dude get to talking about Dragon Ball, and that's all we talk about. And I see his uh, true intentions, and I see all this, this and that. And like, yeah, all right, dude. And hopefully he won't come come out and expose himself 
to be oh bust ass dude, <laughs> or she <laughs> won't go. come out to expose themselves as oh bust ass dude. But if they do, that means that that's what, that means that they that means that they had them intentions from the get go. But One see, day they gonna bad, belong bad. to me. But that's that bad. bad is. See, go we're ahead, not talking about relationship right now. We're talking about we're talking about just friendship. Exactly. So if you keep right. going into the female male dichotomy on the subject, then we're off on something that I'm not even addressing. Okay. No, we, but see, we're <laughs> nah, you're good, you're good because it still comes down to friendship, kingship, and queenship. It, well, it's yeah, about that's, respecting that's yourself and respecting level, the other. Do what now? Like the third level. That's like the next week topic. Yeah, that's next week's topic. Yeah. <laughs> this week we still we're still uh, diving into this friendship thing, and I'm just bringing out these these questions because you know people get it confused when exactly. you say friendship. That they're expecting, they're tying everything in. So, I, I just want to make sure we understand friendship. A friend is going to have your best interest at heart. Bottom Correct. line, Correct. Mm -hmm. they're supposed to. Bottom line, friendship is the only journey that we cannot take alone. Mm -hmm. That is true. Go ahead. You okay. started it. Go ahead. So you you were saying before, other than going to war, where the, one of the biggest things is learning to agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. <laughs> Like he's saying, Dragon Ball. Okay, what if I don't like Dragon Ball? Then apparently you probably like Naruto. <laughs> so you still gonna wind up kicking it or whatever. Did I'm I just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Did I touch a nerd? <laughs> Oh goodness. That's one thing about me. Y'all that's one thing y'all gonna know about me, man. Number one, I'm an anime head, I'm a game head, and I'm a music head and all that stuff. So, so mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that's that's one thing about me, man. So depending on you know, we attracted I think, you know, we're attracted to energies that we are attracted mm -hmm. to energies that are kindred. So okay. you know, we so so whenever you see something about somebody who impeach your interest or something like that, and you heard them like you go somewhere, like for instance, I went to this uh, orchestra one time, and it was the, the the Final Fantasy music, the orchestra where they played all the music for the final for the Final Fantasy series. So what what was there? It was a lot of people that are fans of Final Fantasy, that Final mm -hmm. Fantasy. So before the show started, you know, you walk in and then you go in, and they had people that was cosplay. So of course I knew who it was. I see this dude in a squall or in a Leon outfit. I can talk Leon with him because you know who the hell Leon Squall is. So it was like okay. You're attracted to the to so you see if certain people with like every time I go somewhere and I got on an anime shirt and I go to Texas Roadhouse, Sawgrass or whatever, and the, the, the host be to set me down and they be, hey man, like your shirt. Oh yeah, you like it? You know, you you know. So we are attracted being to being an associate. Huh? Being an associate? That's more that's more like being an associate. Associate. But what I'm saying, I'm just saying, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying like like this is what sparks it's those sparks. conversations. Yeah, these are what sparks those conversations, and then you be like, "Oh man, we really hit this off," and then you give it time, and then it grows, and then you just never know. And then all of a sudden, certain things start popping up, and then you start talking to these per this person frequently, and then things just start growing, just like it probably would be with any other relationship. Okay, so I'm glad you said that, Frederick, because in your book you do address the difference between, <coughs> excuse me, friendship and associates. Let's go ahead and break that down for for our viewers. Well, it's like he's saying, you have a lot in common with people that you associate with. <coughs> you're, more, you're more, you're leaning more towards wanting to associate with people than you are being mm -hmm. friends with people. Okay. So would and, that be considered like these groups, like especially Facebook, Facebook groups, you, you know, those are associates. the things that's in common. Okay. Okay. Can you call one of your Facebook friends and ask them for a hundred dollars? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what the scariest part about that is? But we'll talk mm -hmm. about that later. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you have Facebook in your book, associates. <laughs> yeah, they should have called it Facebook associates. In your book, you said that in your lifetime, you will only have, what, roughly three real friends in life? Well, three or four people that you can really, really call friends. I'm talking about true friendship. Mm -hmm. Because the ultimate this, goal of friendship is brother or sisterhood. Yes. Oh yes. Because yes. Become a family member 
or they yes. become your brother or they become your sister or your long lost aunt or your long lost aunt. <laughs> yes. so, the ultimate goal of friendship is family because mm -hmm. we all need to belong to a good family now i can't choose my relatives but i can choose my friends Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if, if I have a horrible family, I can bring up and make my own good family with chosen friends. Okay. So you so, can find that level of healing. Man, yes. Because uh, I, I, I learned, well, I'm not going to say I learned. I believe that we make our own family. Correct. That that's what mm -hmm. I believe. We make our own family. They call us other people relatives. Mm -hmm. yeah, relatives. Relatives. That's exactly. Relate. Just, <laughs> just because they blood don't mean they family. <laughs> they family. <laughs> I also have a chapter in there calling turning a family member into a friend. Because Touch sometimes that. that's the deepest bond to begin with. But I don't mm -hmm. approach family members like their family. I approach them as people that I intend to be friends. To be friendly. And some of those we can't we can't be friendly with. That energy does not mesh. That we don't have common ground. We exactly. go to go to I war. Like, we just go to war. Exactly. Yeah, I know part of that I think. Cutting slings. Hmm. Part of that cut war. Slings. Part of that war. Part of that war is people because people be forcing them hoes. They be forcing them damn connections. They really. I can agree work. with that. They it's really want agree with work. that. It's in the book. You can't force the connection. If it's not there, it's not there. And mm. so you can't force a family member to become your friend. That has to be something that they choose. Mm -hmm. well, the only way to know is basically going to war, it's, uh, it eliminates any piece of the puzzle that don't fit. Hmm. I, I like that. Yeah. Now, let, let's go back to this, this friendship thing and putting your not putting your best foot forward okay yeah because we most people we like to show that best side of us that perfect side of us well, that, now I, go ahead i was about to say that goes back to chosen his decepticons and everything <laughs> like i mean it's a term bro that, i mean but the thing I, is i like to put my worst foot forward mm -hmm. do you want to know why yeah. So you can see me at my worst first. Correct. Now, if you can see me at my worst, there's not too much I'm going to do to dissuade you yep. from getting to know me. No, you no, made up your mind, and you've already made up your mind that this is what it is. This is this the same thing that I went through when you wasn't here. This is one of the parts of the recap, too. I mm -hmm. let you see me in base form. When I let you see me in base form and you like me and you like what you see in base form, you're going to love when I improve. You're gonna you love go. when I go, you're gonna love when I go Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3. You're gonna love it because base form is what you see and what it is. Okay, I knew I was right about you. Whenever you, you you're funny, you you witty, you 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 show me it's intelligent, and this is just base form. And I'm not even gonna tell you about the other forms. You just gonna have to see it because this is something that we both gonna understand. I don't know how the I don't know how the uh how big the power jump. I don't know what attributes or abilities I'm going to unlock in the next level. That's something we're going to find out together. But right now, the here and now is what I want you to understand. So I definitely agree with that, showing you work. And this first. is for women as well. We're not saying uh, don't do your hair, don't brush your teeth, don't wash your face. You know? <laughs> now, you put your makeup on, we're going swimming first. <laughs> <laughs> the first day we're, we're not going swimming. This boy said we're going swimming. We're going to Splash Town. <laughs> we're not <laughs> saying that, but for those that uh, display that they have it all together all the time, that that's what we're addressing with that. And it's the same for guys, okay? If you sit down and you scratch your balls and Passing gas, you know, <laughs> let it be, let it be what it is. Yeah, let me go to the. Yeah. What you mean, say, Frederick? We're not talking about going that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, later on. But I mean, it, later it, on, that stuff comes on, down yes, when it's comfortable. We're not saying when it's comfortable, but I'm I'm bringing it up because I I do know that there are women out there that have issues with this, you know, and everyone everyone has their um. 
I don't want to say gross moments, but the real them. You're gonna wake up. You you're, you're gonna, gonna belt. Like you're that. gonna you you you're gonna wake up and you're gonna see. You are this going side to this find person. yourself. You are going to find yourself in the bathroom stall while one of y'all on the commode one day, and you're just gonna be like having a full fledged conversation while you in here laying eggs. Right. It happens. I'm gonna smell your wait. fart one day. <laughs> And this is all part of being a friend. So you can sit there and you, you might say, oh, this is disgusting. This is not reality and X, Y, Z. But this happens. This is life. You don't, it's not just going to come out when you start living together. There's a meme you for know? that. There's a meme for that? Just like there's an app for that, there's a meme for that. <laughs> there's, there's a meme for everything. It's a meme for everything. <laughs> Frederick. Okay. So my whole point was the biggest thing about going to war mm -hmm. is you have to basically do what's in chapter two. You got to learn how to agree to disagree. Now, okay. let's say you're a Democrat and I'm a Republican. What does I'm that Republican. have to do with us being friends? Nothing. It's just a difference of opinion, a different of perspective. That's it. It has last, nothing to do. The last time I checked, when I go to vote, you ain't in the booth with me. Right. <laughs> so why does oh, that happen? Man. I don't have to agree with you about everything. Okay, what oh, if I'm colorblind and you say the sky is blue and I see a green hazel, uh, hazel or something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm never gonna see things the way you see them because I am not you. Correct. This and is true. Residual, residual self image. Everybody wants someone else to be a mini me or a copy of themselves. Well, if you can't stand yourself, how are you gonna stand me? Uh huh. Interesting. I can, I can dig it. And the biggest okay. thing about agreeing to disagree is you don't grow when your all of your associates have everything in common. You're just a group of idiots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it burns. But that's what, but that's but it, it burns. But that's I mean that's 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 the truth about it. That's man. the truth. Yeah, about that's, it, a, that's the truth of it. That's the size of it. If I totally agree. Everyone in the group thinks alike, believes alike, see alike. You're just gonna constantly go in a circle. Where there is, is no growth? room for growth. There's, there's no, there's room, no room, for room for growth. Hey, you remember this workshop that they used to have on, and they would get these six or seven people from different walks of life. And they had to learn how to survive together as a team. What is that? Um, I forgot the name of it. But uh, that's, what, that's what life is like. Isn't you that that the, island show being kicked off no, the island thing? No, 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 not naked and afraid. Not naked and afraid. I didn't call that shit that. No, this is because uh, people are afraid to see you naked. <laughs> <laughs> naked and afraid. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, they would have all of these different people and they had all of these different backgrounds. And the mm -hmm. more diverse the backgrounds, the greater the potential for survival. Do I need to repeat that? One more time. We have, we have, we, yeah, repeat like that, but then we're gonna address these comments over here. <clears throat> Go ahead, repeat that please. The, the greater the diversity in the people, the greater the potential for survival. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. I can agree with that. Now okay. Go the comments. Let's go. Rochelle said um, she's disagreeing with the uh, uh, opposite sex the friendship. Man, she said, friends. Okay. She says uh, she's had a guy friend since high school and nothing has ever happened between them. Evil might always be present, but you have to have self-control of yourself and not allow anything to happen. This is true. Self respect, well, self control. Her, I'm not going to play with you. <laughs> and, and you have to understand the concept. If I'm over here with Jane, why are you telling me about Greta? Mm. <laughs> that, that, doesn't, wow. that doesn't equate in my little world because my mate understands where I'm coming from because we have that friendship first mm -hmm. and that's something we both agree on. So that is a cornerstone in the foundation that we've already built. 
Okay. Now so she uh, if she I, called the, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just saying it doesn't matter if me and Rochelle don't agree because I'm not dating her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Again, <laughs> as I said, <laughs> it depends on that level of respect, understanding, and that and that couple and, and maturity is maturity. the business of being grown. When you can get to a point where you understand, um, I know what you said, Frederick. If I don't trust me, why would I trust you? I get it. <laughs> but if you can't trust yourself, you don't need to be in a relationship. Really? That's how I see it. Well, that's how I see it. When it comes Bible, down, hey, the Bible tells me that I'm not allowed to trust me. <laughs> the Bible tells me I'm damn sure not allowed to trust you. <laughs> Maybe not to your own understanding. <laughs> so okay. you, 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 you can give me all that pro-human stuff you want, but I'm telling you, I'm not listening. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> okay. Oh man. For what it is. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, let's be real. <laughs> Jarrell Please, says, be real. "Also, what neutrality is killing convo nowadays too? Ooh, that's oh, standing on the fence." Oh well, see the thing is, is chapter four is how to have a good conversation. Address that. Well, because I mean, what Jarrell saying is that that's interesting. Let let's look at that chapter. Good so, morning, by the way, brother. Good morning. Okay. Go ahead and address that, please. Then we'll address this this comment he just made. He said her homie will smash if she let him. This is a fact. So okay, there you go. <laughs> <clears throat> now a good I, I, oh, I was gonna go ahead and read this thing. No, go ahead. Mm -mm. Okay. A good and meaningful conversation should be chaotic. Not one person demanding to finish their point as though they have the ability to dictate the thoughts and reactions of another. Every conversation has its own rhythm, its own life. People will interrupt and go off on a different tangent, just like we do every time we talk. <laughs> because the conversation dictates this must be done. Be patient. The time to make your point will come again. It always does. A true conversation is the meeting of minds and souls brought together to express the thoughts and intents of the heart. When we speak, we're expressing our desire to be known. Repression is the enemy of personal growth. Conversations are meant to get out of hand. So both parties stop and gasp in astonishment at the words, truths, and knowledge gained. A good and meaningful conversation will affect the very fiber of your being. It must have meaning. No idle words. Okay. Now. Basically, basically summing all that up, we're gonna have to go ahead and start this training. That means that it's gonna be the things that I don't like, things that you don't like, the things that I like, and that we need to have these hard to have conversations. There that's you go. A part of, I believe that's a part of that war that Frederick was talking about when yes. he was talking about it. That's a part of that war. You cannot, it's duality. I've always said this. You have to have war if you want to get to peace. You have to have that. And that's another part of that friendship shit. It's, you know me, you you know me and I know you when you know that I'm not about to sit up here and let you do certain shit that's going to damage you. Because if we are in a friendship and I know that I'm connected to you in a sense and you connected to me, if you hurt you, you hurt me. And I'm not a friend if I let you hurt you. And you're not mine. And I'm not, I'm not your friend if I let you hurt you and you're not my friend if you let me hurt me. Because it's either us going to deny some things that you do that's like, if I'd have told you not to do this shit, and I'd have sit up there and say, hey, man, don't eat that Snickers because that Snickers got candy, that Snickers got peanuts in it, and you ain't supposed to have no goddamn peanuts. And I tell you this, and I go to your crib, and I take all the Snickers and the paydays out your pantry, and, and, and then a week later, here it is, you in the hospital, and you like, I'm in the hospital, why? Because I had an allergic reaction to peanuts. Nico, I just took all the paydays and the Snickers out your pantry. So you mean to tell? Okay, look, I'm going to tell you this out of love. Good for you with that IV in your arm and you got to take this nasty ass medicine and stuff like that. But didn't I tell you? And I stood there. Now you got to learn. I'm going to come visit you. I'm going to come bring you stuff. But you got to learn that shit on your own. That's some things that, you know, that's the only type of pain that, that, that I can say 
is, is necessary because you. But at the same time, you hurt me because guess what? When I'm sitting at your bedside, and I'm probably gonna be in my feelings because I'm like, man, look, you hurt yourself. Now why what am I gonna do? What am I going to do? Position. And I'm I like, why, what am I going to do if something happens to you? I usually call you when I have a problem. When you ain't there, what you think gonna happen to me? And this, mm -hmm. and that, that exactly. right there should prick you. Like, dang, I gotta be here for this person. I have mm -hmm. to be here for you. And that's just on a friendship level. Mm -hmm. We ain't even talking about the romantic part. The mm -hmm. romantic part is times. Oh. The romantic <laughs> part is times 10. Like, after we didn't sit up there, we didn't do did this part, and we did this, mm -hmm. and then we together and stuff like that. And, and, and I depend on you for this, and you depend on me for that. And it's like, and I'm sitting up here, now I'm, now I'm on your ass about your health. And you ain't doing this. You taking <laughs> away from me by taking you away from me. And that's why I'm on your ass. That's why we at war. Wow. Well, see, now that was time. powerful. I just wanted to say, being a friend is learning to take an ass to him. <laughs> yes. Even <laughs> even when it okay, so even when it's hard, like uh like you said, these conversations, these difficult conversations, being a real friend is telling that person, God. I love you and I want to see you flourish. I want to see you here for the next chapter, the next, you know, on the next level. So, and what you're doing is hurting me. Watching you do this is hurting me. Okay. I get it. You know, and, and we do have some of these, these people out here that aren't willing to accept that. It goes back to, I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do Being selfish. It. Yeah. Selfish or selfless. You have to make a choice. Awesome. Awesome. All right, y'all. We have a few more minutes. Um, and let's go back to your book, Frederick. You have, we talked about turning a family member into friend, going to war, disagreeing, uh, common ground. Celebrating differences. Celebrating differences. Okay, let's hear that. Okay, now the biggest problem you have to overcome in any friendship is that modicum of jealousy. Or yes. before it turns into envy. Envy. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the, the way you deal with uh, jealousy is you keep giving them props until it stops hurting. Mm -hmm. Did that sink in? Yep. I got that one. I, I caught that one in the end zone. <laughs> Jerome <Yeah. laughs> said you also have to be willing to sacrifice a finger to save your hand. There you go. Mm -hmm. yep. That's See, in the Bible. Because Without your hands, you can't no. grab hold of anything. Nope. Nope. You can't. You, you can, can lose a finger, but you can you need your hands. Mm -hmm. Especially when you gotta go and smell your friend's farts and then you gotta wipe your butt <laughs> up. I don't smell no roses in here. Quit lying. <laughs> roses. Roses. My ass. <laughs> Outcast just came to mind. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's the reason why I said that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So anyway, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you do. You have to be able to sacrifice. I like that though. I like that you have to be able to sacrifice your finger to save your hand. And that's what come on now. You know that that part is in the Bible, like don't let one member of the body uh um the, 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 the one member of the body, the eye strays or something. Not saying go in the bathroom and pluck your eye out. If it is I'm <laughs> not saying that. But it, you know that's part of it. Said to save the whole thing, get rid of the. You guys think we're butchering that scripture? But okay. Yeah, you know, hold up. You know somebody actually. Hey, you know somebody actually did that though. Y'all remember that artist Houston? No. From back in the day, it was an artist named you. You gonna remember it? Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you his song from back in the day. You gonna remember who it is? Did he and he actually did out. that shit. He did him. that he plucked shit. It out. Yes, he went and did that shit. That's sad. Yeah, that's that's, I ain't gonna say that, it was sad. sad. It was just that he wound up getting into. He wound up. That's that's the topic for another. But he yeah, wound up we, letting we, it get we'll infiltrated. Get that. We'll get to we'll, that. But yeah. <laughs> but I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying, like that's part of what you said. I believe that's part of what you said, though, Like when he, when when Jarrell said that uh, you have to be able to sacrifice a finger to save the hand. So you can't just let the whole member. You can't just let one part of it affect you. You have to change your way. Like you have to be like, okay, you know what? This is not gonna work for the whole of me. 
I have to be able to turn away from this so that I can save everything, so that I can cleanse everything. That's perfect. That's that's partially friendship in a nutshell. <laughs> okay, so Jarrell says he'll cut off a sibling before he let them uh, disrupt his peace. Now, Scarm that five. that's for any and everybody, you know. I, I would think, um, especially if you can't be a friend with this family member, that goes back to what you were saying, correct? Cut wings. <laughs> cut wings. <laughs> cut slings. That's exactly what you say in the book. Don't be afraid to cut slings. If if you can't find common ground, cut slings. If if cut they're slings. not keeping their word, cut slings. That is what you say in the book, correct? Oh, and yeah. <laughs> you see um, what happened to Mufasa? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <man. laughs> oh, long live the king looking at it. Matthew oh, eighteen oh, nine. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you get started with that, chosen. When I made that crack about not liking Dragon Ball, I was just using that as an analogy. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I know, I know, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rochelle says, yeah. she's quoting, she says, Matthew 18, 9. Frederick, I know you pretty much know that scripture by heart. Can you go ahead and recite that? Oh, yeah, just this. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter in life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. That Matthew 18, that, 9. That dude read that scripture and he went and he plugged his own damn eye. I remember this. Wow. <laughs> and okay. The only time I can just <laughs> quote scripture like that is like I'm in a conversation and the scripture just rolls off my tongue. I, I'm not a. What's that movie, Wally, or what? One of those robots where you just throw something at me and I'm blah, 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 here you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna do this uh, recap. We have a few minutes left. When uh, your quote in your book is, "People seem to have serious problems with finding real friends, knowing how to identify real friends, and in some cases, being a real friend." Let's wrap that up real quick. Frederick, how do we identify real friends other than finding common ground, not being afraid of arguing? Uh, you said we needed to celebrate differences. What else? You pretty much put it all there in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> you got to agree to disagree. Going to well, how do you find a real friend? Easy. Mm -hmm. Look where you least expect them. Because Look where we friends, least expect them. Most of the friends I found. I had nothing in common with as far as what do you call those things that people like to do? Hobbies and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> say what people like to do. Yeah, hobbies. Yeah, that people like to do. What you humans <laughs> like to do. What you what are those things you humans <laughs> like to do. <laughs> well, I'm kind of weird and all I like to do is read and learn stuff. So, so I don't do I. go out and do all of this stuff and I try not to engage as much much as possible. But most of my friends are people that we were so day and night and so different and it adds a certain amount of depth and worth and awesomeness to just being their friend because no matter what happens when we're having a conversation i have to shut up and listen because i think nothing like them and it might give you something it, it, might, it might give you something. It's gonna it give you learn. something. It's like, hold up, wait a minute. I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. But for the for the I, fact that you shared that with me and you helped me understand, it's two. It, it, I just want to say this real quick. It's two things. Sometimes you got people that put you on shit just so they can exalt themselves, mm -hmm. and they really don't have you in mind. They say, oh, but you ain't know that, did you? Huh? Huh, I put you on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then you got you know, but then and then you got the one saying, man, look, because I know you didn't know this. And I know you, and this will benefit you as a person. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna put you on this because it's gonna help you see things different. You know what I'm saying? It help because your real friends is gonna help. Your real friends is gonna see what you don't have, and they're going to give you what you don't have, and it's not gonna mm -hmm. cost you a thing. You know what I'm saying? It's, I'm always trying to look for the betterment of you. You know what I'm saying? So, thing, and it always costs you one thing: time. Time. That's it. I'm glad you said that because you because I was getting ready to get hung up and I was about to miss that. <laughs> and I'm glad you said that because that's exactly what I was going to get. Like, See, I was about to overthink the shit and you, you did that. You, you, you caught it. Excellent. 
But see, I do that too. I overthink everything. <laughs> I'd rather overthink than underestimate. You know, I'd rather overestimate than underestimate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in a nutshell, uh, friendship is the first level to any type of relationship. It's the mm -hmm. the journey that we can't make alone. We have to have friends. Um, yep. And in order to have a, a valuable friendship, I would say, as Frederick said, you have to not be afraid to pull back those layers of self and address uh, that deep within and be able to not be afraid to share that that you that you hold deep within with someone else let them in they're here to help okay um but be wise about it don't go open it up to everyone because yeah, you're here to help until i realize you're here to hinder you're here to help until i realize you're here to hinder go on the war is weeding out the rift route Oh, and you, and you do say walk. that in your book as well. And you can pick up the Friendship Manual by F.D. Sparkman on Amazon. I will drop a link again on the page. Um, also Barnes & Noble. Also Barnes & Noble. Look at you. <laughs> Go get it. Go get it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Leroy. He says, great show on recognizing friendship. All right. Does anyone have any last words? Uh, you know, I'm always going to tell y'all, man, take heed, you know, open your ears, be receptive, be victorious, be balanced, be great. And that's all I really got for y'all, man. All right. Thank you for joining Coffee and Convo with RE and Chosen, special guest Frederick Sparkman. Love you. Everything we say and do out here is in love. Have a lovely day. Have a good one.